Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I know. I haven't done one of these videos in such a long time and Grenada, y'all can relax. I'm coming from my own country right now. The St. Lucia Carnival had just finished, just wrapped its Carnival Wednesday, you know, which... <sighs> not being home for Carnival this year really made me see things from a different perspective and I just wanted to talk to you guys about it. And from the title of this video, you know, it's focused at influencers and how that's affecting Carnival and how ironic it is coming from what you would probably consider a carnival influencer let's talk some things okay so st lucia carnival this year was my first year missing out on jumping carnival since i started jumping carnival like many many moons ago the feeling that i didn't expect to have i felt like i would have been you know having the worst fomo but some things were happening and i was just like i i don't know i don't know so let's just you know give a brief review and then we'll get into you know why i really wanted to do this video so everybody knows that st lucia is very very well known for its music now denry soka and it's it's taking over the world by storm it's playing in every country every island it's 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 taking off a, taking on a world of its own actually because i remember when being in ue barbados hearing one song and even trinidad carnival the first year i jumped which was 2016 hearing one song from St. Lucia was like mind-blowing and now it almost like rotates in <laughs> heavy selection with every other country's mainstay music mainstay music right I will say though this year I feel like I did not hear enough music being put out and I know I'm gonna get the the people quoting and commenting on Twitter about oh there was always so much music where was it if it was out there then you know these big airs should have picked them up and they didn't um and if i didn't like them i don't really consider them contenders in the music and solution usually has a plethora of music that you know you can choose from and this year i felt like the groovy direction just wasn't my cup of tea just wasn't and it's not my cup of tea just going based off of what i know solution carnival and solution soca to be like in the days of Ricky T and well not the days of because he still um competes but like Isla Man, Cupid, all these people, there was a certain sound that we had for Power Soka that was kinda lost and it kinda was more t we, we kinda more lean to Groovy Soka and it's kinda what is fucking up our carnival. Let's just talk about it. I think I can curse now because YouTube takes off money and stuff and views when you're cursing the first 16 or 15 seconds so i think we're clear for now so i can say fuck so it's pissing me the fuck off like all foreigners right now would never believe that once upon a time we had some of the best power soccer songs in the caribbean and competed in a lot of the competitions including the international soccer monarch in trinidad against the best and we had like we had such a good sound when you had like Pito rhythm, like Lego Me rhythm, like it's these songs that Marshall and all of these started to pick up and, and incorporate into their songs. The motto that you like to drag was behind a lot of the best songs from all over the Caribbean because of our distinct sound. And now that's kind of being stifled and you know, there's a new production of this kind of storytelling groovy soca. And I, that's good for y'all if you like it. I really don't care for it much. I'm not saying that the songs that were out this year were not good. They were good songs. I think some of the songs were more so, you know, geared towards um, promotional carnival, as in let's promote St. Lucia Carnival outside of St. Lucia and this would be a great song to do so. I agree, 100%, great song just not my cup of tea for the road and what i'm used to so the results were just released and road march was clock out and that's by nerdy and second place was hello carnival by ezra i think third place was a tie also oh, third place was miss grippy by shemi j and fourth place was kedek kedek by mighty and tied with Caillou by um ricky t Personally, I would have, as a reveler, loved to hear balance in the dance. <laughs> Can you balance on one side? That would have been my personal road match. Now, what plays now has become determined a lot by who wants what to play. It's coming, it's becoming a lot like what Trinidad used to talk about, like the Soka Mafia, right? Loki. 
Um, but I would never in a million years guess that the great song, I love it, Clock Out, would have been Road March. Because I'm trying to figure out, first of all, Friday was the last day to clock out. So here in Carnival, on Carnival Monday, clock out. Like, it just doesn't hit the same way. Like, clock out was like a Carnival Week kind of song where it's like, miss, like, wow. I can really leave that desk there now. First day I want to go escape. Friday I want to go sack a fit. I, like, that's, that's what clock out gave me. It wouldn't have given me the same effect on the road. But okay, they won, whatever. And in the judges' defense, they didn't have much options to choose from, to be quite fair. And that brings me back to where are the artists? Like, put music out where you... Listen, I know it's probably not free to go into the studio, but that's why it was amazing when Denry's segment and Denry's soca used to be recorded in people's grandmother living room. Because you put on a little... Your PC, you have your little mix board, and somebody come in there, and somebody else say, oi, 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 don't come and say, no fuck me at my home. That's the kind of music I like for Senusha Carnival, and that's why everybody has been coming to Senusha Carnival. So speaking of everybody coming to Senusha Carnival, we have this, <laughs> this makes me, this is a great segue into Influencer Carnival. And that has become a plague in all of the carnivals so far. And I think the only people fighting back right now are like St. Vincent, Loki. Um, Dominica is still doing a good job at, at, at gra grappling onto raw culture. But I think like everybody else is just like, <laughs> let the influencers like just swarm the country. And for some who may know only verse and not chapter, they might think it's a little bit hypocritical coming from me, who is probably deemed by you as a carnival influencer. I don't consider myself that because it wasn't the goal. And before things were paid for me to do, before flights were bought, event tickets were given, I did it all myself and I just happened to record it. So that's a good way to let you know the history of where I my influencing came from or my content creation came from in the carnival space before i started the only people that i was aware of was global carnivalist and bohemian easter and they did a blog post which is the writing reviews of the carnivals right and it was also glenn, i think it was glenn or somebody on youtube who did like he would plant his camera and just let the footage run and so there was nobody else in my that kind of did what i started doing where I would take those, say, I would do the video version of a blog. That's why it's called a vlog, right? That's what we call it, a vlog. So a video blog, where I would kind of give a recap and a, 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 an inside view as to how the carnivals in the different islands, countries would operate. And, you know, at the time, influence came about because people were like, oh my God, it, it seems hard to travel to other carnivals, but these people, these three, four people are making it seem very simple and very easy. And they're kind of giving us, putting us on game as to how to do it, how to budget, how to, which parties to go to, how expensive which parties are, which, you know, which bands to jump with, what airlines to, like, it was, we gave good information. Um, so shout out to Global Carnivalist and shout out to Bohemian Easter, who paved the way for the review segment, the review side of things in Carnival. And shout out to me, <laughs> because some people like to, you know, <sighs> like to act, you know, they like to act like they don't know, right? But everybody who, everybody who is in tune with the influencer space or in tune with the carnival space, they know what time it was. So how has it changed from then to now, in my opinion? Um, before it was more authentic, for sure. It was actually, a, I wouldn't say actually a job because I don't want to shit on anybody who's just starting out and that's not the point of the video. But to sit and write a review, one, an honest review, but a politically correct review because you have to be a professional, to be able to market a brand, both yourself as a brand and another brand, and for other persons to jump on the bandwagon it was a hard job to do you understand before it was just like something i remember pulling on my camera 2016 2015 2017 and people would be like laughing and clowning hey you vlogging that's for your vlog whatever whatever and it was not something that was done people do, didn't record events people didn't 
you know, they were after movies, but I kind of merged after movies with reviews and with like real time music and real time food and real time, you know, performances and stuff like that. So now there's a shift to where, well, anybody who follows me on social media knows I don't like the whining culture of influence. I don't get it. And nobody can clock me and say, you know, it's because you can't dance because everybody who knows, you all know. Okay? Let's just, <laughs> let's not even act like I ain't gonna wind around circles in, a, in anybody's party. But low key, <laughs> where, 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 where the girls <laughs> got wind that we were getting like either paid monetary compensation or flights, hotels, transportation, costumes paid for for these carnivals that we were attending in the later days, everybody was like, oh, <laughs> but I need a piece of this. Because costumes started to rise and if I could get a free costume, then of course, why not? Why wouldn't I? And, they, and in their mind, it was just like, oh, it's so simple. They're just pulling out their phones, recording and posting and tagging. So now everybody posts and tags and tags and tags and tags and tags. And it's like, hey, look at me, I'm influencing. Or oh, these people bought this because of me. And it's just like, it's not the same, baby. Trust, trust me, I 100% get that things evolve. But what happened to, hello? <laughs> my name is, welcome back to my channel. Just like everybody wants to just be viral and that's how they rank their influence. I don't even blame the influencers who kind of use that because the bands and the brands and the promoters are the ones who are not, you know, using proper metrics and, you know, trying to see how that will transcend into getting new customers. And that is, and that, and that's the same for the celebrities that come to Carnival. It's a good look, but is it, you know, financially, you know, a good decision? You're spending so much money for someone to come in, and the people who are their natural audience, their regular audience, gives two shits about Carnival. They'll be like, oh, she's in a, in a, in an outfit with feathers. Okay, cool, go off, sis. And the next day, they gives two shits about our culture. I have no problem with anybody getting their bag, but it's causing a shift in the culture. And I see a lot of you complaining about the shift in the culture. And I, and I, and I think I have the answer as to why it is shifting. All carnivals in the Caribbean are now becoming one. It's becoming a merger. <laughs> and it's because the same people do the same things also. Yeah. We used to jump, we used to go to different carnivals. Global Carnivalist has been to probably every carnival. Great. However, it was always with a different mindset. And also she represented herself. Bohemia Nista represented herself. I represented myself. On no contracts. Listen closely. <laughs> On no contracts. Were there ever some type of mechanism where, oh, it's either you get all of us or you get none of us. It never gave that. And I can say that confidently, I know now a lot of that is happening. Photographers, influencers, uh, media people, pages, catch, band together. And it's like, oh, these are our metrics. If you book us, then you're going to get this amount of views. And they add their shit up together, which is wild to me. And of course, if we're all going together, which is why there was such an influx of influences. Everybody's friends now. So shade, I'm... The likelihood of us having a different experience is very thin. So whether it's, you know, an authentic experience or not, which most times it's not, because I've, see, I've personally seen people create content and it's... It ne trust me, it's giving and seeing. For me... I'm not as regular because if the vibe is not there, my camera isn't there. I mean, it's there, it's on my side, but it's not there. And so when you do get a review from me, when you do get a video or vlog from me, it's because I am fully and truly immersed in, this, in, in the experience. Posting these short clips that go viral because the, the thumbnail is somebody's ass open, you know, very vulgar whining and dancing, camera in crotch angles, is only gonna get numbers for now. It tells the future reveler nothing about the band, nothing about the brand, nothing about your experience at all. It just, I, some, half the time the audience doesn't know who in the video was you. 
no shade and to add on to the relationships that the, the influencers have with all these other media people they also have in relationships with foreign djs and so it's a package deal for a lot of time a lot of these carnivals where if you see a foreign dj trust me you're going to see these five influencers plus this media house plus because they all move together and i'm not saying it's a terrible thing but at some point all carnivals are going to start looking smelling sounding the exact same way and i don't know about you but i don't want that i like my carnivals very authentic i like when i go to trinidad it gives trinidad when i go to when i i'm in saint lucia it is lucian carnival it is mad it is yeah no rules them kind of thing i like that type of vibe my kind of music not no foreign music well not no foreign music i can say it boldly and proudly and when i go to the other carnivals i expect the same if i go to junk and new like or like another carnival i don't expect to get a trinidad carnival experience i want an authentic experience because i if i've never been i'd like to learn some stuff so slow down on the influencing okay let's be authentic child even they even have like couple packages now some may say i'm jealous and maybe i am maybe i am maybe because i can't find somebody to love me i'm jealous that i can't have like an influencer couples package but i digress and lastly because i didn't want to spend too much time on this video as an influencer if that is something that you want to do because i support anybody being an entrepreneur or somebody who is going to be a creative if that is what you want to do go for it remember you are a brand you are your own brand and you represent yourself everywhere remember if it's not on a contract doesn't mean anything okay if you've not signed and they haven't signed it doesn't mean anything remember carnival is also dynamic i've been in situations <laughs> global has been in situations we've been in situations together where we've experienced not the best service from a brand or a band who has sought us out for you know content creation influencing whatever there's a way to go about it and dragging is not you know it's not it doesn't get you anywhere every other brand is going to be afraid as hell to work with you also consider yourself a staff member when you're booked and signed to a brand or a band or a promoter where you're not a celebrity brands want you for exposure for some sort of public relations assistance on social media to put out fires and to just be a good representation for them so any brand or band who has any kind of ethic work ethic and customer service is going to prioritize the customer who is paying over themselves as the executive and the influencer and so the influencer only is one notch above the persons who are directing the band in terms of priority we've paid for you to be there the band has paid for you to be there and so if an if 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 I if I was a band leader and I had paying revelers missing a costume and I had an influencer missing a costume, I already spent money on the influencer, right? I'm going to choose to prioritize and to service the person who is paying from their pockets to be in my band, to be promoted at my party. We will figure this out another time. Okay? Now that's all. <laughs> this was good. This was good. I like this. I enjoyed this. I enjoyed this. I enjoyed this. What you think about influencers in Carnival and, you know, if you think it's a great thing, if you think it's a terrible thing, how you think we could use influencers to bring back the authenticity that Carnivals from each island, each country used to have? Comment down below and let me know. And I'm actually thinking about editing the 2020 to St. Lucia Carnival vlog because I didn't, I know, you know me, if I don't feel it, I don't feel it, but I feel like I, I feel like it's going to be a nice way to, you know, show how authentic St. Lucia Carnival used to be. See you in the next video. Bye.